Sup cunts? Hi, I'm Vince, also known as Pleasant Kenobi on the internet. I am the Magic the Gathering content creator equivalent of a discarded condom. I am rubbery, I'm perhaps useless now that you've used me, but you still want to look inside, you still want to have a good little slurp. Get that tasty treat out from deep inside that crevasse, that little, that little tasty morsel within the hole. This is the pre-stream bit, this is the new intro. I mean, actually, if you're watching this in six months' time after I've recorded it, it's probably not the new intro. But yeah, welcome to the stream. Here comes the sun, little darling. I'm not live right now. This is a pre-recorded intro, but I will be live shortly. Don't you fucking worry. So welcome to the Hot Boy Milky Gamer Zone. I am the Hot Boy Gamer. I am the most milkable man in esports entertainment. I am the premier beard of the format. If you don't believe me, well, I was endorsed by Louis Scott Vargas. What gives him authority over beards? I don't know, but it sounds good on paper. This is twitch.tv forward slash Pleasant Kenobi. This is where the magic happens, or at least the streaming of the magic. I do stream other things too. A little bit of Warhammer there, a little bit of painting here. A little bit of variety content. Sometimes I play League of Legends just get incredibly stressed out. But mainly, it's magic. I'm live this time, 7pm. Well, I say this time. I might play this intro before a non-Monday stream. But I'm live every Monday at 7pm GMT or BST. As well as impromptu streams announced via my Twitter and my Instagram and my YouTube. So you should follow me on all those platforms too. Why I'm called... Yep, not very original, Pleasant Kenobi. There are links to my Instagram and my Twitter and my YouTube down in the uh, like about me section below this stream. Um, YouTube is where the real magic happens and says that I put up more content over there. I put up between three and seven videos a week, primarily magic. Again, a bit of variety content. Wednesdays tend to be Warhammer, but the majority is Magic the Gathering. If you are here for pro plays, if you are here to become an MPL level player, well, firstly, I don't even... Hello, chat. For people who are back for the magic talks and the magic streaming, we are two and a half minutes out that from the announcement stream where we're going to sit and chat and look at all the stuff that's happening in magic for the next year. Um, hope you like products because they got products coming out of their ears. Follow me. Right, I'm just going to promote this. Follow me. How are we doing, chat? Who's who? Who we got here? We got who? Who goes there? Who goes there? Who's, who we got then? Who? Um. Oh, don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm excited. I'm in a good mood. Things are good. Know what you're doing right now? Impressing the heck out of me. Thank you for the resub. Who is the, who's that? Who's that? Spencer? Spencer Andrew Schlicht. I hope you like product, you fuck. I got loads of it for you. We are 1 minute 40 out. Got loads of it for you. I don't know why I've turned into an orc. He's turned into an orc. This is actually a lot. <laughs> Pretending to be an orc is actually really fun. Follow me. Can't believe I keep thinking it's Wednesday. Via Daddy Bezos, JG Bros, give me that prime. Oh, the hype train has begun. Here we fucking go. What oh. are you doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> this is the official stream. It might as well be. Plop. They, they, they... plop. You fucking, you fucking, you wanna, you wanna plop, dear son. You wanna fucking plop. Um, they did write out to like all the what creators, be like, hey, right would now? you like to co-stream this? I'm like, I'll give it a go. Never done it before. Never done it before. Right. Here we go, chat. Here we go. I won't keep their chat open because it's just going to be full of mouth breathers, isn't it? Let's be honest. 30 seconds to go. Am I still muted on this thing? How is there no beginning music? You know? Follow me. What we got to... What we got here then, chat? What we got here then? It's all the magic. I'm going to move the uh, notification thing out of the way. There we go. So it doesn't ruin the reveal of the Phyrexians. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, Black Panther 64 If you like the shit I do, you can sub with the sub button above my head or check out the links to the Patreon down below. Or just ask on Patreon. Want to get involved in my Discord? No, it's way more fun right than now. products. 
impressing the heck out. There we go. Callahan TMS from the Mindscopers. Hello, my friend. Right. What's it going to be? Hello, friends. Start with? Since the start of 2021, we've seen a ton of new content. We've seen four major content. set releases. Caldheim, Strixhaven, Modern Horizons 2, and Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. We've also seen on. the digital release of Magic the Gathering Arena on mobile. Give me Phyrexians, Jimmy! Caldheim took us to a plane inspired by Norse and Viking mythology. A chance to boast and foretell. Rock on. Strixhaven sent us back to school hey, with colleges vying Neo. for your scholarship fund. Hey, go Silver Quill. <laughs> We expanded our horizons. I didn't actually know who's in this. I know Jimmy was promoting. I didn't see uh, Joseph moments, And more powerful options for a beloved constructed format. Next, we got to get our D&D on with the adventures in the Forgotten Realms. What? Oh, where did I put my bag of holding? Oh, and MTG Arena came to mobile. Yay! But while the magic games we played in 2021 have been great, the where, the how, and the why of those games has been challenging. Which is why, before the giddy excitement of everything we want to share with you today, we want to say a heartfelt All thank nice play. Thank you to our legions of local game stores whose tenacity, determination, and love of gaming mean they're right there when we need them the most. Thank you to the multiverse of talented content creators whose love of the game brightened our days and showed us how to gather virtually. Thank you for being a part of the gathering at a time when it has never been more important. Where do we stand? Together. 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 And together, we are the gathering. I promise What's for up, everybody? Play will be I'm nice. your host, Jimmy Wong, and I'll be joined throughout the next hour by fantastic Bye. guests okay. from across the multiverse. Magic Showcase 2021 goes beyond the playmat, bringing you first looks at tabletop and digital gaming for 2022. In today's show, well, good, we'll though. look at the rest of 2021 first. Tabletop, digital, yeah. Um, I don't know, Cobb. I don't know where I stand on that, honestly. Then it's on to next year for everything coming your way from Bye, bonus sets to secret layers, from comics to art books. Oh, also one word. Comics. Un. Want to know the full set release roster for 2022? Another unset. We got you. Okay. And something you'll really want to see at the end of the show. In short, whatever you love about the, the X, best game of the world, we've got intro new products, sound. new partnerships, and new MTG reveals. Arena and Xbox, you ready, chat? Are you ready? This is magic tomorrow. It's got achievements. Today. I was at Netflix. I thought it was the Xbox intro. I'm such a moron. Do you we get a trailer? Do you get a trailer? All right, everybody, let's get right into it. Today, I've been joined by Vice no, President of R&D, right Aaron Forsyth. Basically, I always Aaron, use my Xbox for Netflix and Netflix only, really so I've got them mixed up in my head. In-store play is back. That's right. It's been a long 18 months, but when you're ready, when your store's ready, when your community's ready, we're going to make sure that you have the right events there to play in. Awesome. Now, Friday Night Magic is something that I have very much missed over these past couple of years. Friends, welcome one on one. Thanks what to the primate. I appreciate that? it. That's really exciting. Right. So F and M will be our flagship in-store play program, as it always has been. Awesome. They'll be offered at all the WPN locations, and it'll be in a variety of formats. So check in with your local community and your local store to see what they're running for any given week. That's a great way to get Bye, in touch with, with your community. And of course, when they're ready, right? Absolutely, when you're ready. Now, for me personally, my favorite event of all time is the pre-release. New players, new cards, new experiences. God, I fucking what are we miss pre-releases. Like actual well, pre-releases. Pre-releases are our biggest in-store events. Mm -hmm. You get to come in and play with new cards a week before they're officially released. Follow me. And we're going to keep that going. So we're going to offer all the same sealed deck play that we had before, and we're going to add a bunch of stuff on top of that as well. Now, something in my heart tells me that multiplayer magic has something to do with that. Is there going to be anything in that world? For sure. Oh, we're going to be hell. adding things to the pre-release. are now multiplayer. <laughs> for social players <laughs> and for commander players. Oh, so don't do this check to in me. with your local store and see what no, they're up to. Doing right and now? of course, these are all going to be Hello, in addition to what's already being offered. So we're just getting more of what we love. That's right. Gifting Steel out to Zero Matrix to Mars. The pre-release is the place friend. to do that. Welcome uh, to the we'll sub room. Like we always have. Now, of course, when you do Subs end up going to your store, make sure you grab the companion app. This is something that's really exciting. Can you tell me a little bit more about this? It's just a great tool for the in-store tournament player. You can register for the events through it. You can track your life total. Oh, you cool. can see where you are in the standings. You can get notified when the next round begins. 
and then even when you're not playing in a store, you can run events from home using it. Wait, we got a companion app that's gonna like be built into work? Card gallery, it does it all. Wow, that's this super exist? handy. And running your own. How do I not know this existed? Like something I've wanted to do for a long time. Now it's Big to me very milk, excitingly, you know, I think friendship in stores and just being able to like really interact with players is something that's so amazing. But for the competitive players out there, I hear that Christmas is coming a little early. That's right. So this December, we're bringing back uh, a program we'd run before called the Store Championship. Oh, uh, cool. Okay, yeah, I've seen that name uh, emblazoned on playmats across my history in Magic. So what's going to be happening? I want a game I'm day once, chat. Cool prizes. <laughs> cool prizes for sure. So we're running them in a, letting the stores choose which format they want to run them in. It can be standard, modern, pioneer, or limited. Uh, and then, there, yes, there are some awesome prizes. Uh, the winners will be getting foil worm coil engines. What? Yes. Yeah, and the top eight gets foil collected company. Wow, that's really uh, cool. And these are some next level Can we promos. see the art? You'll have to check them out. Wow, and then anyone who shows up at all will get a, a promo Arbor Elf just for showing up. Wow, that's fantastic. That's the promos sound awesome. Now, please tell me that there's Commander something special cube planned for the champions themselves. Because that's the, that's the one you're going for if you're competitive. Right, so that worm coil engine, as well as the top eight collected companies, are going to be printed with the name of each individual store on the card. So wow. these promos are going to be unique to that store. That is so fucking gas. With your promos whenever you put them in your decks forever if you make it to the top eight of that event. That's awesome. Fuck, I'm that's sure so cool. Game store owners are going to be so excited to see that. Their name on an official Magic card. That's amazing. And I hear you also some good news for Commander What the fuck? That's so decent. Yeah, so we're going to be starting an event called Commander Parties, hmm. which is going to be a very social event. Okay. Storytelling. <laughs> So, oh, interesting. Yeah, so uh, we're not, it's not really about winning. Okay. Uh, it's about kind of communal engagement, storytelling. Fucking casuals. Kind of game where what you do in your game can affect <laughs> other games. There'll be an ongoing story piece happening in the background. What? A really, really new, cool experience that immerses you in, a, in the first one in the world. Oh, of it's D&D. &D. Oh, wow, that's amazing. And yeah. more excitingly, I love the fact that you're able to... D&D without dice rolls, cards. ...around more, so that's awesome. Winning doesn't matter, and you're... You're really playing almost like a metagame outside of Commander. That's right, and anyone who shows up will get a, a participation promo. Oh, fantastic. Well, Aaron, it sounds like stores are going to be the place to be, of course, again, when it is safe for everyone. So thank Absolutely. you so much, Aaron. Really awesome news. Aaron Forsythe, But everybody. you woke up to tell a story now, in Commander and someone's just like blowing up all your lands. Joe Johnson. So, Joe, Follow me. what's going on? Hey, thanks, Jimmy. What up? Uh, I'm here with Jess Lanzillo, Senior Creative Director of Wizards of the Coast. What's up, Jess? How you doing? Hey, Joe. It's really great to be here with you today. Yeah. All right, cool. We got so many cool things coming up. Where, where do we even start? Well, let's start on the plane so nice. We're going to go there twice. Hey, let's go. And when I say nice, I mean totally spooky. <laughs> so we're going to be going back to Innistrad for two sets. Uh, both Midnight Hunt and Crimson Vow. Ooh, Midnight Hunt. What's, what's that all about? It's about werewolves. Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely about werewolves. If someone does look uncomfortable really on camera chat, you don't have to point it out. Innistrad, like, the some people the aren't Tide Festival. the best presenters. Essentially, what's or happened great is that the just day night balance nice. has gotten all out of whack, and the werewolves are now trying to take over. Okay, like they do, like they do. Yeah, it's so. kind of their thing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, are there any, like, special features in this about maybe it's like a special werewolf coming out in this one or you know we're going to be telling everyone a little bit more about this on show the r and cold card come on Magic, um with uh, some special guests including one very famous werewolf, wait. true bloods Alcine. wait Ooh, are they announcing another oh my let's go. Go. Yeah, it's be great. sets coming let's go there's going to be some cards previewed on well. september 2nd right, thanks for fantastic. tuning in so we can tell you in there. that's what's up all right, so Midnight Fuck. Hunt is coming out, what, September 24th? And when can we see that Crimson Vow happening? It's November 19th. Nice, nice. What's going on with that uh, Crimson Vow? So Crimson Vow is our vampire wedding set, right? Ooh, okay. Super over the top, opulent vampire wedding, as a vampire is wont to do. Um, Olivia Valdarin, who is the head of the Valdarin uh, family of vampires, has decided to really go for true power couple goals. Oh. Team up with a yet to be announced huh. groom to be oh, okay. and uh, take over all of Innistrad. Nice, nice. Okay, cool. So well, we, I, I knew mean, got we know this already. We know this vibes Can going we... on in the vampire world. Um, man. And that's not all. So oh. in 2022, coming to WPN stores is Innistrad Double Feature. Ooh, okay. So we asked ourselves two things. Hey, we've got Crimson Vow okay. and Midnight Who's your feature? Hunt. Okay. Why don't we put them together for a draft experience? Oh, okay. And then we also ask ourselves, hey, we're really inspired. It's the old two-block system. 
Why don't we do really cool collectible versions of our cards that are inspired by classic monster movies? So we smash those one. together into a collect a draft or a draft delectable experience. Delectable experience. Yes. To monsters, maybe. To monsters. <laughs> and perhaps to anyone who would like to go to their WPN store and crack some packs. Sounds amazing. So, so now does okay. Rebel feature, feature, feature cards from the new set? It features, features, cards, cards from both sets, Midnight Hunt and Crimson Vow. That is so cool. Okay, I mean, man, I'm just saying, it might be summer now, but with Innistrad just around the corner, the dark approaches quickly. And humans don't stand a chance. And I'm, I'm a human. Does that, does that put me at risk? J Jimmy, help me out, man. Okay, so it's gonna be a collector's draft environment. Both Thank sets involved in it, really like the old stuff. two set now, block Aaron, structure. Innistrad is just one of the okay. many exciting ways for us to experience Double this feature. game that we love, but we can't forget about digital. Um, for me, in these past 18 months, it's been a total escape. <laughs> we can't forget like about digital! And all that stuff. Can you tell us a little bit about what's coming for digital? Yeah, so you mentioned playing mobile, uh, Arena on mobile, and that has been a huge win for uh, bringing the game to many, many more players here in 2021. Yeah. And we know tons of different So far, we've play learned arena, almost nothing. The, um, the store promo stuff is gas. Practice, whether right. it's digital Double only feature sounds interesting, but we didn't get any info of it, really, other than that it exists. Up to date experience, or whether it's mobile Ultimate. players looking for something bite sized they can carry in their pocket. So, we're going to continue to offer a ton of experiences and add to it. So, like I said, we'll be offering all the traditional standard and draft play mm -hmm. for the t that the tabletop players enjoy. Yeah, I installed the arena on my phone, it crashed, stuff, and then like went the back. the Mirror Mirror rebalancing event that we had recently, mm -hmm. as well as Jumpstart Historic Horizons, which comes out in a couple days. Awesome. And we're going to be looking to expand the tools we have at our disposal to add even more different experiences to meet players where they are. Yeah, so again, it's adding more to what's already there and not limiting what was anything in the past. That's, That's right. awesome. Now, when it comes to the sets and renewals <laughs> and rotations, when are we going to be able to expect that for our competitive players? Yeah, so every September, the magic year kind of resets for standard play. Uh, and we no, you doing right now? remove four Impressing sets from the environment the to allow the next Three four years, Three years, baby. Jesus Christ. Up. So this September, Rotation is coming. Uh, we're going to be seeing Throne of Eldraine rotate out. Bye-bye, Throne, Heroes you fuck! Death, I rotate out Ikoria, Lair of Behemoths, and Corset 21. Or M21. I'm not really sad to see any to of that shit go. Isn't that weird? Sets Sometimes well. you should be sad to see Stanley go and not anymore. Uh, and so that makes it a great time to get into playing, uh, especially on Arena, because we have this. Please cool don't make this announcement stream of thing where you're trying to sell a standard. Renewal egg. Oh, nice. What's in it? Well, it's got all sorts of individual card rewards and even some Innistrad Midnight Hunt booster packs. That's really exciting. I'm, I'm super looking forward to that. I can't wait to open some of those packs. Now, are there any plans to open up and shake up which formats are available in Arena? Well, the big one that we're making changes to is, is Historic Brawl. Right. So that's one that fans clamored for. We've run queues in it in the past, but we're doing two big things with this next update. Mm -hmm. One, we're changing it to be 100 cards. Oh, okay. Uh, which is I was sad to see uh, yeah. Sphinx and Fev go patterns. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> that was the as good well shit. As putting the queue up uh, in perpetuity. Uh, oh, so wow. that you can play it any time of day, any time of the week, for as long as you leave it up there. Fantastic. So there's no plans to take it down. Nope. I, we can just keep playing Historic Brawl in the 100-card format now. That's right. Wow. Okay. And is there anything you can share about the Arena Opens? Because that's something that I've been really it's been having so much fun watching streamers play and playing myself. Right. So those are our biggest uh, competitive events that we run for Arena players, and we love them. Uh, and we're going to make some... Changes to the formats we're offering there, including the big one that I know players have been clamoring for, which is we're going to offer our first draft open here coming up soon. Really? Oh, wow. Limited tournaments. Yes. That's right. So now you can draft. What the fuck happened uh, to my camera? Winning some, some real prize money that way. Oh, that's exciting. There we go. That's better. So, and, you know, one thing that has been really near and dear Arena to open money. has been the way I've, I've gotten a lot of other players into the game is Jumpstart. So what can you tell us about Jumpstart? Fuck it. Here's a Jumpstart open. Jumpstart Story Horizons Horizons comes play out Jumpstart. two days from now. Uh... It, Jumpstart's been just a tremendous success for us. It's been a I'll great be way to introduce new players to the really game. Yeah. Super fast and casual. It kind of combines not sure if I like, uh, the best of limited the and constructed. Uh, yeah. and it changes over and over and over to a bunch of thing. cards from the Modern Horizon sets, which are near and dear to my heart, bringing those to Arena for the first time. 
as well as a new thing with digital first cards that we've designed that can work only on Arena right. that have some really sweet new mechanics. Yeah, like in perpetuity, words I'd never have seen before. Really right. exciting stuff. Wow, okay, so much to process. It's time for a very quick break, but not for you, because many more announcements are just moments away. And later on in the show, we're gonna reveal every single Magic set coming out in 2022. So we see you in 60. 60? You're not actually having a break, are you? There you go, new product. More dazzling reprints. New product! Sought after Commander Staples. This Commander collection so is cool. all about black, including eight cards with new focused art and character homages. Available in foil and non-foil at your local game store. <laughs> no break of the product train, baby! Um, so grab your Commander collection. Character base? I don't recognize half of those characters. Oh, that's cool. Introducing Pioneer Challenger decks 2021. Based on top level competitive decks, the four decks in the collection you into the fun and powerful Pioneer format. Whether you want Azoria Spirits in blue white or Zav Auras in white black, it's I'm almost like they're supporting it. I'm into this. Black, I'm not excited about Lotus Pioneer, but the fact that they're doing decks the for it suggests there's some like support here, right? Commands. You'll get everything you need, including a full main Cole, did they ever say Pioneer wasn't selling? Box. I'm not aware of that. So if you haven't already, become an MTG Pioneer October 15th, 2021. October 15th. Come on, let's get some actual fucking events to play them at. Coordinated assassination attempts on guild masters Rao Zarek, Vraska, and Kaya rock the city of Ravnica and leave Jace Bellerin's life hanging in the balance. A new comic book. is lit that threatens not only these three guilds, but the entire plane of Ravnica. Now, these three must form a tenuous alliance to uncover why. Pioneer Vendex actually well sentence. hyped compared to like modern Vendex. We've been wanting this for years, That's right? The first story arc in the biggest MTG comic launch ever. And here to tell us more about it is principal brand designer Daniel Ketchum. You know, when I first started working at Wizards, I actually partnered with IDW Comics to tell a story about Chandra in the aftermath of War of the Spark. It was directly spun from the events of the TCG story. Um, but our friends at Boom Studios are doing something. Yeah, I'm agreeing, Pat. It's like having multiple decks is gas. I hope it's not the only ones we see now for like 10 years like we did with Maintain modern what's core Vindic. about the Planeswalkers, uh, but takes them on brand new adventures. You don't need to know anything about the card game. You can just start at issue one and go from there. Awesome. Well, Unfortunately, they look a little bit generic, are, but I mean, great story. But comics like Magic are cool. highly collectible, and this comic is no exception. Correct. So every issue actually has a number of variant covers attached to it, hidden oh planes walker variants, if you will. Um, each one drawn by a different superstar comics artist. And when can we get our hands on the latest issue? Well, issue number five is on sale right now, Jimmy. Hey, got him, Coach. All right. Cool. Out of time! We're out of time! Mr. Drop, it's gone. Okay, I think these are fucking gas. I always did a short about this this morning. People moaning about these are really over fucking reacting. These are sick. Those are new, right? Kami, Reki, Heartless, to get to Michiko Kondo, and yeah. Toshiro Umazawa new art. <laughs> Coming soon. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with memes in this sort of product. What's up, everybody? It's a good We're place still to here with Aaron Forsyth, and now we are joined in our circle of revelation by Jess Lanzillo and the delightful duelist, Becca Scott. Welcome, friends. Okay, folks, questions. Jess, Aaron, we're going to talk about the 2022 release roster in a little bit, but I want to ask you about some of these awesome bonus sets that, yeah. you know, they really help the magic excitement just go on and on all year round. Just what's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Check out the right of the thing for that, that purpose. Battle for Baldur's Gate. <laughs> so social play is the key to both Dungeons and Dragons and Commander. So I told you it's D and D. I fucking told you it's D and D. It's going to be a set taking place in the city of Baldur's Gate, uh, which is located in the okay. Sun Coast. I'm in. Very I'm cool, in. Aaron. Tell us about the you got me. for Baldur's Gate. Well, there are certainly a ton of new legends themed as D and D characters. Yeah. There's going to be new multiplayer. Keywords. I'll look it up. And we have a really cool draft environment, which we had it in the first Commander Legends, but a lot of people didn't get to experience that because yep. of uh, the pandemic. But you get to pick two cards out of a 20 card booster, uh, pass, and then pick two more cards each time until you have a 60 card 
limited deck with the commander. Wow, I got draft commander legends a couple of times and it was a total blast. Yeah, yeah. commander legends was yeah. sick. Ah, oh, so fun. Okay, so what that was during the pandemic, though, wasn't it? Did I draft it? Oh well. No. Impressing the heck Booster fun, of course. Oh, oh, I'm actually able to take over one of these. Our rulebook frames from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. We're now expanding that look beyond creatures. Uh, we are looking this is at sick, right? I do love this. Cards, but isn't it fucking weird the, that this only uh, just happened? The and we're already like, it's back. Which are the foil etch legends. Oh, excellent. And when can we expect to get this set in our hands? This will be in the first half of 2022. Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, I'm really excited for that. But also another thing I'm stoked for, Jess. Jumpstart comes out just in a couple of days here on Arena. When are we going to be able to expect to see that coming to tabletop? You betcha. We've got Jumpstart 2022 coming to Tabletop. Wow. It's the easiest way to combine the best parts of limited and constructed play. You just get a couple of boosters, you shuffle That's old art though, play. isn't it? Yeah. It's totally the best. Uh, you get 20 card boosters. This time around, we're doing them in 46 different themes. Wow. Do you want to hear a couple samples of the themes? Yes, oh. show us some stuff. How about multi-headed creatures? Yeah. How about Eldrazi? Oh, I'll leave you hanging there. Oh, that's going to be a new... Okay, so calling it New Old Drazi Titan. It's going to be packs, fucking $100 to buy. So in each pack, you're going to get 20... You're going to get one new card to this set. Wow. You're going to get a no, booster fun right card in an animal. It has heads. It's going to be bottoms. And then you're going to get some awesome reprints. Oh, amazing. Uh, okay, when do we get our hands on it? I'm ready. <laughs> It'll be coming out in the back half of 2022. Ooh, but that seems like kind of a long way away. Aaron, help me out. Is there anything you could tell us about that's coming a little sooner? Yep. Double Master Tomorrow. 22 comes out next summer. Awesome. Ooh, okay. That only just so happened. Us, what is Double Masters all about? <laughs> okay, oh, so my what's better God. than one rare per pack? Two it's so funny. Pack. And what's better than one foil per pack? Two, Two foils per pack. per pack. All right, so now you get what it's all about. <laughs> say three, so say three. Double Masters Fuck. is a reprint set full of all sorts of awesome reprints. Two rares per pack, two foils per pack and a really sweet new multicolored draft environment. How long ago was the last uh, Double Masters? You guys hear that? Oh, Becca, hey, uh, Aaron, Jess, please stay seated. We've made first contact. Yeah, we'll check this out. Yes. Ah! It's Mark Rosewater, an astronaut suit. I'm Mark Rosewater, head designer for Magic the Gathering. Mm. Oh, hey, Mark, you can take your helmet off. The air is good to breathe in here. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing here, Mark? Well, I'm dressed in a silly costume, so we know what that means. Yes! It's time for another unset! Oh! All right, okay. finally. <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. So, as people know, the unsets, like, in Magic, there's a, a spectrum. You can go to very competitive Magic. Did we just interrupt the last point? Magic. We hadn't finished, right? We hadn't all finished. All the way on the fun and casual side. It's Fuck about Mag. just doing fun things with your friends, Fuck. having great experiences, and just laughing and enjoying the act of playing Magic. Awesome. Um, so one of the things we always try to do with unsets is try to do something that magic does, but put our twist on it. Right. So for example, Unstable said, faction sets are a lot of fun, so let's do a faction unset. So this time I said, what I want to do is a top-down unset. I want to take a really resonant trope and then just make lots of cards influenced by that. And so what we so said fun. is, okay, here's my idea, guys. I want to do a retro science fiction space <laughs> Carnival slash amusement park slash circuit. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, yeah, you're, you're good to go. <laughs> all right, all right, put all the things in one. Like, Mark, stop throwing, stop throwing random shit in the wall, Mark. Mark, aren't you worried about, you know, the space-time continuum breaking? Well, uh, if anything's going to break magic, no. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that we always want to do in magic is, in the, with the unsets, is just go places we've never gone before. Do things we've never gone before. So right now, we are taking you to Myra the Magnificent's Intergalactic Astratorium of Fun. Wow. So it is a space carnival that travels the galaxy with out of that, I mean, it's a science fiction, so it's rides that you couldn't even possibly imagine. And what we're going to do is we're bringing all these fun tropes and bringing them to magic. So anything you enjoy about carnivals, about amusement parks, about circuses, it's all here in a really fun, exciting new set coming out in the second quarter of 2022. Awesome. And uh, as a What the fuck is going on? Are we going to be seeing some new base lands? <laughs> of course. Yes. Uh, oh, fucking. The lands are going to be like three of them in one box. Every single time. 
but this time we are making basic lands. Yay. So they are full <laughs> art, full bleed basic lands, but set on on the uh, on the ground of planets and in space. So for the first time ever, you can have sky It's literally a clown fiesta. For magic. It's literally a clown we're fiesta. That, we're also doing um shock <sighs> lands set in space as well. So those are awesome. You can also open those up. Oh, place. sell the set. Okay, Mark. When do the players set. get to get their hands on this awesome new one set? It's coming out in the second quarter of... Shark Lounge in the set. So soon. Yeah. So the science fiction thing, dog. The multiverse and the universe collide. <laughs> Thanks for the bits, my friend. Infinity and beyond. beyond. Bye, Mark. Oh, we'll see you later. Toy Story Secret Lair. Toy Story Secret Lair. It's a chaperone, I think. I think it seems fine. I think it's a cool idea. Dumb Good is proud to share their vintage-inspired collection designed around the Black Lotus and the retro Magic the Gathering logo. There's a full range of products, including apparel, accessories, and home pieces. But, yeah, but the last show was $100 and was, and was like, so available for a day. Uh, grumble, grumble, grumble. There's a new Magic art book on the way. A visual history by Jay and Ellie. Or, to give it the full title, Magic the Gathering, Planes of the Multiverse, A Visual History. So, what's the book all about, Daniel? Well, Planes of the Multiverse takes us on a tour of Magic's most beloved worlds. Uh, each entry tells the story of a different plane and the colorful and uh, characters cool, that inhabit it. Uh, one of my personal favorites, of Looks course, cool. is Arlen Cord, the planeswalker from Innistrad. Um, and we'll also get a deeper dive into some of the other worlds, such as Theros, Dominaria, and Amonkhet. And you don't have to wait on this one. It's available today. On Amazon, I bet. So have these all been revealed yesterday? I only saw the planeswalkers this morning. Oh, Hive Lord. They're cool. They're very, very cool. These... Oh, yeah, I've seen these already this morning, yeah. We saw that art a long time ago, didn't we? Oh, look at that flag class guy. It's so good. Oof. Welcome back, everybody. A Black Lotus Magic dildo. I'd buy it. I don't have my shelf behind by me. Becca Scott, who has spent a lot of time tracking someone very special down. Yeah, Jimmy, you know how Garrick. it works. I mean, sometimes we ring up a guest. Come. To come on the show. That's it. Easy. Like Mark Post Malone. Malone, for example. Sometimes we got to talk to people's My agents, father. But sometimes. A dog. Go above and beyond. Sometimes universes beyond. To talk about this and much more, well, in product architect Mark Hagen. Hey, how's it going, guys? Mark, good. So good, Mark. So good to have you here. Thank you. It's weird to see okay. him without like a thousand Mark, trainers yeah, behind him. Yours. Tell us more. Yeah. So um, we previously announced two big partnerships we have coming: uh, Warhammer oh, Twenty Thousand and the Inject it so into my anus. Let's fucking have it. Uh, and then also we have a couple other partnerships that we haven't mentioned yet that I'll give you guys a sneak preview of. Oh, we love there. Show us a Warhammer yeah. car, please. So let's start with Warhammer 40,000. Uh, so this is a property that so many of us were so excited about. This is kind of a lifelong dream of mine to work, um, to kind of bring that cool world over to Magic. Come on. Um, so we assembled a, a team of... The Silent King, Morven Ball, Dante, come on. We got to work, and we're going to do this one through Commander Magnus. decks. Ooh. So it'll be yeah, we this already. Four Stop telling us the shit decks. we already fucking um, know, bring please. The world and the characters of Warhammer oh 40, my god! Mm -hmm. um, all of the cards have Warhammer Forty Thousand art, so you really do dive right into the world uh, when you play with one of these decks. Um, and then also we have a few kind of secret layer bonuses that are going to kind of come along for the ride. Uh, we just God, they've got the me. They've so got it's, me. Uh, it's fun stuff. Let's take a look. Um, Manus Kalgar. Okay. A couple pieces of art I can show you here. That's some uh, these sick are art. Kind of iconic Warhammer 40,000 yeah. Space Marines. So it's the uh, Ultramarine kind of, Chapter Master. Uh, just a dash of Suppressors. And uh, these are Ultramarine again. You see in that product. Oh no. In the back it's all Ultramarines. That is so it always was. Art is such a no, don't stop there! No! Yeah. It, it's so cool to see it represented in this way. Yeah, just flipping through these cards is such a treat. And <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, even the reprints, even the basic lands, like w once we were kind of able to just pull in their whole universe, these cards are so Fuck. funny. Right. Right. Yep. 40k well, lands. 40, to just one, the one ring. Don't just show us Marines! Exactly. So the Lord of the Rings Fuck. into magic, um, as we've mentioned before. So, um, you know, it is Yeah, we have world. to have all the so trades. Of course stories, we do. I just so want to see more than that. So many moments that we kind of got to play with in our sandbox. 
And the only way we could pull it off was to do a full set. So this is Go a on. full booster Show us. set. Show us. Gotcha. Yeah, we went all Show the way. Show us Gandalf. Back. Gimli. So, um, the characters you would want, Come on. Gandalf and Gollum and Frodo, all those, uh, the moments Just show us one art. Uh, from those stories, all of that comes Because that one art um, looked a bit too colorful, perhaps? This is perhaps? going to be, uh, you know, it's a big swing for us. So we, we built this full set, you, you can draft it. it. They're going to be modern legal, so these cards will go into the modern format. Mm -hmm. And this is going to come out in 2023. So Why? All right, wow. I mean, just bring oh my God. the universe like that into magic must be such a challenge. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's what a lot the of the fuck? fun, right? Why is it all such a mess? So much backstory and their own personality and their own history, and now we get to kind of... Um, People in chat say, I thought we didn't like these. I never said I didn't like this shit, right? You guys all convinced yourself. a little bit of a magic twist to them. So we'll take a look at Gandalf. This is Gandalf, uh, friend of the Shire. And so you can see uh, that magic take, uh, you know, a very fun picture. But also, you know, this is the Gandalf that um, many of us have kind of been imagining as we've been part of this world for so long. Really that's not Ian McKellen. ...of the Shire. Now, is this set also of that course, is true. coming to tabletop yep. anywhere else? Indeed. I cannot play, I cannot wait to play to fucking to Hobbits play. and Taxes. And oh, yeah, the one ring, so Forge Mystic so fetches it. Let's go! Wherever you love to play Magic. Um, and uh, we didn't just stop at the set. So along with the set, which you can draft or play, uh, we also have ready to go Commander decks. So there'll be four decks if you just want to dive right in. And again, some secret layers that are going to kind of get in on the fun while we have this opportunity. So a, a, a big wave, a, a really fun way to just enter the world of the Lord of the Rings, uh, you know, with your friends around a table. Yeah, I love it. I heard you say the secret word. Indeed, secret layer is uh, if secret layer. That's is a, a secret word. Everyone that knows that you about can it. Kind of play around with some of these partnerships. So sometimes we're looking to do something a little quicker or lighter or, or experimental. Uh, and so I have two partnerships that I'll announce today. Ooh. The first one is Fortnite. Ooh, <laughs> That's right. yeah. Okay, okay. Are you so fucking know, kidding? Huge fans of them. They do so much interesting stuff over there. And so we. Oh have two my drugs, uh, that god! Are, uh, the flavor and character and world and kind of vibe. No! <laughs> We're going to do this one with the oh, so These are cards that you fuck. might already be playing in your deck. Um, but now you'll get. Fuck! The, the Fortnite version. And uh, we, we had a ton of fun with no. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's just a world. It's kind of a... a slight, oh, um, my a that we don't fucking see that often God. In, like, pour it all the way in. Fortnite Magic Cards, here we go! Okay, We're nice. Fortnite now, boys! Yeah. Is this <laughs> You're so much cooler for doing it back then. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. Don't you stop it. Such no. Mm, please. Okay, but you said there were two exciting collaborations. If Fortnite's the first, what's the second? Yeah, so... Oh, uh, be worse. Tell you something. Come on, something. Street Fighter drop. Whoa. Okay, that's gas. So, um... You okay, know, I'm into that. that. You know, I, I fell in love with, you know, in the arcade as a child. I've been playing with them. You know, they've just been part of my life. Fuck yes! Part of gaming for so long. Oh my goodness. And now they're making the jump to magic. So, so cool. Yes. Yeah, so she looks shocked. Iconic, uh, Street Fighter characters. We built yes! Ryu, um, Chun-Li, fucking uh, let's go! Yeah, you, you see the art here. This is Chun-Li. Yep. Um, which, uh, you know, we... we the team that set was horizontal art. That is a planeswalker. Call it now. Call it now. Horizontal art. Planeswalker. In, uh, in gaming. True. That um, was a planeswalker chat. What do we think? And so, Yay or nay? Uh, I can announce today, breaking news, this card has multi-kicker. <laughs> <laughs> we had no choice. Right. How else could you do Chun-Li? Is That's it okay? Hilarious. It's normal to cry when you see a magic card, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Cool, wow, cool, that cool, is cool, amazing. Cool. Great yeah, flavor yeah, there. Yeah, I love it. Nice. I love it. Yeah, all that very exciting stuff is happening in the future. So tell us about right now and about the out of time super drop. Right, so we have a, a brand new super drop that's dropping right now. It's available. Um, yeah, I hope Chun Li just ruins um, modern. And uh, I'll show you the cards. Super fun oh, stuff. Great. So yeah, it's kind of a time travel theme. Out of time is the name. Um, the first one is called Teferi's Time Trouble. So, uh, time travel in the unset, these, these time travel in this, cool we're going to the cards. future Kamigawa, so they're going to go into sci-fi, um, 100%. Presented them as if we had been making these cards in the 90s. Uh. So kind of old frames, the kind of old way we used to write rules to describe how to make these things work. So we had so much fun, the editing team had so much fun figuring out how to, how to kind of make these work. So that's the fairy tale. These are wicked. Play. Super fun. How what does scuffed even mean, Tom? Drops? There's five total drops, so that's the first What does that even mean? Uh, the second one is, uh, uh, we're going back to a beloved place called Kamigawa. So this is called All Kamigawa right. Inc. Uh -huh. We're going and back. So these are five, we're going um, forward. Uh, classic Kamigawa characters. Uh, Inked cards that, or uh, have been incorporated. For a long time. And now we've done them here in this kind of cool Japanese ink painting style 
just a, a very different take yeah, on this card. So super fun. The heart is going to get to it's wicked. And kind of uh, revisit classic Kamigawa. And Reki. Uh, back in time a little bit. Love that. Okay, we've got a drop based on a character. To Anyone else hate these? Oh, come off it! Yep. Have a little bit of fun the in life! Two, yeah, you got it. The next two are artist series. So this is a place where we team up with an artist. We know all these, right? These were all yesterday. And we just say, go nuts, do what you want to do, <coughs> help us pick the cards, you decide. Call on the great creator of reserve list. And, and no, that's, wait for no. The great stuff <laughs> no. to come back in. So the first one is uh, Johannes Voss. Mm -hmm. So this is this beautiful uh, kind of I ordered two, two non-foils in the latest um, ones, Zach. Uh, tell the tale as they kind of go on an adventure. Gorgeous kind of colorful. Uh, in a way, I'm actually excited for Fortnite Magic cards because it is, that is just like the off the cliff. The, the shark is here and you were like, uh, I'm over it on a jet ski. It's pure nightmare fuel. This oh, is yeah. uh, Wild stuff. We couldn't. That that sliver high board is in. fucking um, awesome. Look at and that. And so Thomas Baxter just went wild on these four crazy cards. And uh, for fans of his out there, we really feel like he he really brought his A game. Wow. Okay. Now if my math is correct. That is all five of the new drops coming our way. By a little Close. Bit. Oh. Uh, that's four. Um, the last one is called Math is for Blockers. Oh. Ah. Yeah, so we, we found an artist out there who does very cool, very fun kind Tom, of Tom, the Fortnite cards were reprints. They said that. There's no, there's no mechanically um, engineered ones, I think. shapes and then building out these, these beautiful illustrations. So we, we knew we had to work with them. And so we put together this kind of lightly math-themed pack. These are wicked. Blockers. If you see the, the... We did a fun gag with the power toughnesses of these characters. So um, a lot of fun stuff. And, uh, fun actually, gag? We have an animation. We'll I wish all of it was like 69. Of here. So you can see... Right, kind of starts oh, with kind I of see. shapes oh, and then there it is, yeah, the triangle. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Oh, that is, that is so, yeah, fucking wicked. Stuff. Well, my math is just fine, and I can correctly identify that the number of these that I want is all of them. Ah. I want all of them. <laughs> How do I get them? Yeah. So Tom is just right a fucking now, nerd. Power and toughness is pi. You can buy them individually. No, the power and toughness is sixty nine. Just the foils or the non foils. So um, yeah, hopefully, if if any of these speak to anyone out there, uh, uh, swing by the website and um, pick one up. Yeah, Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Mark, for coming on the yeah. show. And next time, we'll know right where to find you. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. All right, everyone. When we so Lord of the Rings into Modern, Warhammer into Legacy. Set release <clears throat> roster for 2022. You don't want to miss it. Stick around. We'll be right back. I don't know. I don't know what the secondary market price of those cards are. I don't know like, if Brazen Borrower makes it worth it or anything. Welcome, friends. It's time to talk Pinfinity. Join the official Magic the Gathering pin subscription by Pinfinity with three beautifully crafted collectible pins powered with augmented reality content. Your first three pins what? feature Den of the Bugbear, the legendary Drit Stoerden, and the Magic Mana symbols. With three epic pins, two chances to win booster boxes. If the pins, like that Drit was like the promo card, if it was a pin of just like Crater Hoof, I would be in. I would be like, I'll be pushing it inside myself. They'll receive first access like, I want to just little cards, drops, right? Like a little Restoration Angel boxes, pin. MTG Fucking yeah, buddy. That'd be so good. Not these, though. Ooh, the AR content seems very cool. So when you scan the pins, you can see artwork, video, music, selfies, and downloadable content with new features coming in the fall. So join selfies. today at pins.ar slash join MTG. Like, can you imagine? Like, you scan it, and it's just Mark Rosewater selfies for some reason. <laughs> Welcome oh, back to you so and weird. to Joe Johnson and to Jess Lanzillo and Aaron Forsyth from Wizards of the Coast. Okay, <coughs> it's the big one. It's time to reveal the roster of sets for 2022. How does next year begin? Well, the first set of 2022 is Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Nice. This is set 2,000 we years know. after the first Kamigawa <clears throat> blog. It's a place where tradition meets modernity. Think neon ninjas and cyberpunk samurai. Very cool. Um, it's got a totally cool futuristic aesthetic where everyone looks amazing. Holy fuck. Um, this is, a, of course, like all magic sets, it has a unique magic twist. This isn't just your typical sci-fi dystopia. It's a really cool place where I think I'd want to live, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, gets to some videos this about is our Blade Runner. Walker, Kaito. Yeah, boy. Cool cyber ninja. We love him. His, His cat's awesome. origami! It's a fucking origami cat chat! Look at it! Uh, Look at it! The of Kamigawa is someone that you may have seen before. Oh, mystery. Jin Kataxis. Jin Kataxis. So this set bridges the history of the original Kamigawa with the future. So that we take a lot of game design elements from the first time we were in Kamigawa years ago and mesh them with some cool sci-fi stuff. It's not a raccoon, it's a cat. Light and color 
and game mechanics that reflect kind of the new modern age that Kamigawa is moving into. Mm, very uh, and interesting. Aaron, you, you've been at Wizards since, you know, long before the yeah, long original time. Kamigawa. <laughs> <laughs> Kamigawa is one of those planes that players remember fondly and look, you know, wanted us to revisit. Well, Tanuki so were meant to be in the original Kamigawa, but they didn't the do it in the end, right? That's an article uh, done. We did just about everything else, some <laughs> all, all new gameplay mechanics. Um, and just tried to give you the, the freshest take we could on, on something that people really love. Nice. Wow. Super exciting. Right. It's been weird they picked like the only Asian theme so block really to then go, oh, it's so punk now. To Kamigawa and do it right. Mm -hmm. So Jimmy, mm -hmm. you've spoken very powerfully about cultural representation. Right. So not only do we have an amazing internal team, but we worked with a bunch of cultural developers and our okay, regional offices good. to make sure that we're delivering <clears throat> on the full experience for our I wouldn't go that far yeah, in this strife, but I, I would like to see what well, other people think of this. Incredibly appreciated, people probably have a better opinion than I do. That's as universal and worldwide as magic is. Well. I cannot wait to see what's happened to Kamigawa 2,000 years after we first visited it, but where are we going to travel to after that? So this is another type of world that we've never really done before. We're going to a, a, a kind of a modern urban fantasy setting. Uh, this is our take on a gangster movie. Whoa. We're really excited to share with you today Streets of New Capenna. This is a glamour setting full of crime. Mm, very interesting. Oh. Yeah, so this is definitely something new for us. Uh, but we're using some familiar elements gameplay wise. Oh, fuck. Uh, three color crime families. Oh. Yeah, that you get to each player. We get to pick the one that they like the best uh, and represent them. And you'll learn that crime does pay. <laughs> Wait, it was like, so, magic is getting oh, Deco, family? Rapture, right. fucking so, yeah, so mechanic crime, film noir. And Tom's so like, demon daddies, behave. Now, as Jess will attest to, its own really unique look and feel. And this is fantasy, right? So you've seen the gangster movies before, but these families won't necessarily all be made up humans. Oh, interesting. That's so we got well, squirrels? Squirrels. squirrels. Uh, <laughs> that would be gas. Homunculi. That'd be so good. Oh, 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 Lorgoys. <laughs> okay. They'd be more about this like orcs, no, ogres, worms. and demons. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> You shall see more one day. Uh, Very exciting. New Capenna is a city originally built by angels, but the times have changed. Demon crime. The city of fallen now angels. Rule the plane and are battling. Is that what we're saying? Supremacy. That's a little bit heavy-handed. Able to join those families on their own personal quest for domination. Man, I mean, this, this genre has such like a unique aesthetic. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, imagine for art to really pop in this set. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah. Yeah. The fashion and the architecture that you will see in New Capenna is something that you've never seen in Magic before. It's really, really breathtaking. Yeah. And fans of lore will love finding out all the stories and how they tied together with this new plane. Uh, in fact, this plane oh, has Batman animated secret lair, Zach. One of our longtime planeswalkers. Well, uh, Elspeth? Okay. <laughs> know, very right? exciting. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm really just going to say it and then move that. on. Okay, two down. Two more to go. What okay, we're saying that moving on. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. We're going home, everyone. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> there is, in fact, no place like home. So we're going to return to where it all began for another classic adventure. We're going to kick off our 30th anniversary with a return to Dominaria. And the set is That's called cool. Dominaria Thirtieth Dom United. Thirtieth Ooh. anniversary is cool for that. Dominaria. So these are all stuff we already knew United. about. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so it's go. a football Epic. set. Yeah, so no place oi, to come oi, back oi. Then where mm -hmm. uh, Let's go. 30th anniversary, huge milestone for Magic. Tons of sets in the past. He's football, crazy. He's football, the man. The original you know, Alpha and Beta sets, Invasion, Urza Saga, just all of some of the most beloved sets ever made, including you know Dominaria, the set we came out with a few years ago. Right. So Urza Saga, one of the most broken back. sets People ever like made. That set so much. <laughs> That's funny. A perfect place to return to for this momentous time in Magic's history. Yeah, I mean, Magic has been growing so much, and it gets new players and fans all the time. So I, I think a lot of them. It's pretty cool so far. I'm actually into it for the very first time on this original plane. Why is Dominaria so special to Magic's history? I mean, it's. The nexus of the multiverse, many of our best stories belong there. So you think about, uh, you know, one of my first cards, Shiv and Dragon, uh, you know, from Shiv. Uh, to Honestly, Lord Urza, Lord. just like topless in the street with a flare up his ass, just light. getting ready for Dominaria uh, to play you know, all sorts of the football characters, Gerard, Sisse, um, Hannah. Iconic heroes go hand in hand right. with all of these amazing settings and set pieces, along with some historic villains, and you'll see more of them too. 
There's history in every corner of Dominaria, and it felt right to return there as magic turns 30. Right, nice. nice. Well, now, you mentioned like the Weatherlight Saga. Uh, just, you know, this place just isn't special because of where it is, but like it's almost also very much where the people live, you know, where they're from. Indeed. Thank you for the <laughs> segue. <laughs> segue. Sure, segue. Uh, that's why our final set of 2022 takes us back in time to the pivotal tale of two siblings who shaped the multiverse. Oh, me and Joe. Okay. Man. <laughs> <laughs> no. <You guys. laughs> I think you guys might be a little bit nicer than these fellas, uh, but we are proud to announce the Brothers War. Oh. All right, so this is a set that's almost 30 years in the making and thousands of years in the making. So, all right, so who are these okay. two brothers? Well, they're two of the most famous. Oh, look at that fucking art. Of magic. You've Ooh. seen them on many of your cards. Uh, this is uh, Magic's Mishra. Horus Heresy, right? They're talented, misguided artificers. Oh, and baby, look at that. It's Mecha. It's, it's Max. So nice. Right, right. They're going to fight each other and everything's going to be broken as fuck. Dominaria in an all-out war. And uh, they may, in fact, just destroy that entire plane. Right, so this is a story that was hinted at a long time ago in the, one of the very first magic sets we ever made, Antiquities. Mm -hmm. And that set was kind of an archaeological dig site where this story was, was unearthed. Right. But we wanted to move the camera back and show it as it happened. So first person view of what the Brothers War was like, what were Urza and Mishra like, when they were waging war across all of Dominaria. Wow, nice. that's so exciting. Yeah, nice. these events are like truly cataclysmic. They uh, really shape what we see the Dominaria today looking like. Uh, but we, when we came back here, we wanted to make sure that we were not just focusing on the brothers, but we were giving other voices, uh, cultures of Dominaria that maybe haven't been shown off a whole bunch of the spotlight. Yeah, this is sick. So this is probably my favorite. Wow. Well, I think the, uh, the crime noir one's pretty sweet the too. The of how we're looking at this time period for Dominaria and seeing it through a new lens. Okay, but it's cool if we know, if we're just like brand new to that this famous be. story. Oh yeah. Absolutely. First and foremost, this is a set full of like epic war and war machines, right? <laughs> <laughs> Giant artifacts, artifact creatures. All right. Just really so. fun cards to play with. Very evocative. Yeah, and at the end of the day, you learn all about the brothers and the brothers war and everything that kind of shaped magic and uh, everything that has come since. Wow. Uh, so that all comes out in the uh, last half of uh, 2022. Nice. We got Kamigawa, Neon Dynasty, Streets of New Capenna, Dominaria United, and the Brothers War. <laughs> it's ready. I'm ready. 2022. Yeah, what a rock we've had on set. I, I mean, Aaron, Jess, it's been so great having you on the show today. Thank you so much. Thanks. It's been awesome. Yeah, this has been amazing. We're so excited for all of these sets. Those can't be the final logos, right? For Dominaria United and the Brothers War. We're working with Ultra Pro, the leading manufacturer and supplier Hashtag of sponsored. collectibles accessories with some exciting products to come. Don't be something bad now, Cole. Be something good. Dice bag. Mochikami are a new addition to the multiverse found in Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Ah, what the fuck These is it? <laughs> what the fuck even is it? As you gain by clipping onto your bag. Is it like a goo monster? Is it like a testicle? Wish for maximum huggability. Well, Ultra Pro, send me one. Let's do it. Play mat, which embodies the spirit of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Take a look into the neon future where brilliant colors and lore collide to offer a hint at what this set has in store for players. These products will launch alongside an entire line of accessories for Kamigawa Neon Dynasty pre-release weekends. Be sure to check it out. I wonder if like Cyberpunk was what made them do this and the map bombed and they're like, Oh shit! It's All right, everyone. We hope it's you had so a fantastic time watching Magic Showcase 2021. And we also hope that you're excited about the. We got the next fixing now, aren't we? To unfold right across the multiverse. On Magic Online. On Magic Arena. On the page. In the boosters. At the kitchen table. And spell table. At your local game stores. And on, on Netflix. Netflix. It's the Xbox sound. Okay, Daniel, today oh, I is to get the a day that we get our very first glimpse at the Magic Animated Series on Netflix. I don't be shit. Please don't be shit. Here. I'm very excited. Uh, so where to start? Uh, 
First Don't of all, be shit. Uh, this new Magic the Gathering animated series, uh, it is completely new, a completely fresh jumping on point, so you can bring your friends, bring your family who have never touched a Magic card in their lives, and they will be able to enjoy the ride from episode one. Fantastic. Is there anything you can tell us about the series, how it's progressing, a timeline maybe mm -hmm. for the fans? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. well, I can tell you a lot of things, but let's see here. <laughs> uh, it's uh, coming along great. Um, it's crazy how far in we are yet uh, how far there is still is to go right um let's see here all the scripts are written and locked in um all of the voice talent has been cast and i think the full first season's even been audio recorded wow so okay so production in. has started uh, then beyond like pre-production he'll play a really really big role in driving the action um this is character first entertainment so this Who? is not Kia? like you know like oh we have to destroy 20 life gems in order to win the day right this kind of features on the characters their relationships and their trials um, and we'll actually get to start seeing that in a prequel novel that we're working on with our partners at Penguin Random House. Oh, wow. This is like the third <laughs> novel that you even featured oh, in, yeah, right? Definitely. Oh, my God, oh right. Gideon is the focus. <laughs> Wait, Gideon is... Uh, what happened to Chandra? So it, uh, it precedes the Netflix show. Okay. Um, and it's, it's going to tell the story of Gideon Jura and Jace Balaran. Um, basically, how Where's they Chandra, met. then? Uh, we'll get to see them road trip through the multiverse, um, right some wrongs, and then eventually we'll also see sort of where their relationship goes sour. I see. So okay. we, got, we got Gideon, we got Jay, so any more familiar faces? I don't think I'm allowed to tell you. You might have to watch the series for that. Okay, well, then we need to know, when are we going to be able to see this for the first time? Uh, well, the novel is going to come out <laughs> alongside the first season of Magic the Gathering, the animated series. Okay, all right. Well, if Gideon is a big part of this novel, then I'm assuming he's just going to be a huge part of the series as well, like you said. Absolutely. We will see quite a bit of him, which is super exciting because, you know, when I started um, at Wizards about three and a half years ago, um, Gideon was one of the first characters that I got to dig into right. and figure out, you know, um, not just, you know, uh, what does this guy look like, you know, as we move from, um, you know, trading card paintings but into animation, but, like, how does he move? How does he speak? How, what does it look like when he casts spells, um, when he uses his, his you know, high romantic powers? Um, what does a Searle look like in motion? I think, you know, there was an afternoon, actually, where a couple of us from the franchise team locked ourselves in a conference room and just watched every YouTube video we could find on Searles because it's like, who knows what a Searle moves like? <laughs> right. so we got to kind of right. figure out what is a Searle, how does it move, and how do you fantasy that up in a really cool way for this Netflix show? All right, well, let's meet the actor bringing Gideon to life. Greetings, Magic fans. I'm Brandon Ralph, huh. and I play it's Gideon Superman. in the upcoming Magic the Gathering animated series okay. coming to Netflix in 2022. For those of you that don't Wait, know, Wait, chicken's Gideon not is vegan? For being the strong guy who always stands up for what's right, just, and isn't afraid to fight. Now I understand why they hired me for this. Makes sense. But seriously... I like the way it's a selfie video. I'm like really excited even about one. the show and really proud and honored to be a part of it it's brandon ruth but a beast uh it was so superman at one point uh, uh it was in scott pilgrim and, years, other shit. Um, and have too many cards <laughs> more he's than a I magic should. player and um also well he'll be on game nights in, next week then uh, magic uh, mtg arena uh as a different character so um i love this world and I'm oh he is still superman in of one of the shows series. right uh hope you all will enjoy it in 2022 Thanks, Magic fans, and uh, I'll see you around the multiverse. Wow, that's, that's Gideon, just Gideon himself. <laughs> awesome. So, when can we expect to see this on our screens? Uh, so, the show will be available on Netflix in the back half of 2022. Okay, all right, okay, and I'm sure you'll keep us posted on all the details and whatnot. For sure. All right, all right. <laughs> awesome. Well, this has been so much fun, and, and thank you to Joe as well for joining me here. Oh, on was he on Spell Slings yeah, at one point? On. And I never a big saw shout that. Out. It was so crazy cool to hear about the Magic Animation. He is not Ralph Arena, is he? Thank you for having me. So, no trailer, no fucking. What a show it has been from the return of in-store play to jumpstart 2022. We're going to have a Frexian like tease from at the Kamigawa end. From Kamigawa Neon Dynasty to the Brothers War. Thanks to the fine folks at Wizards of the Coast and to you, fans of the best game in the world. They make the magic, you make the gathering. Together, Magic in 2022 is going to be amazing. So until next time, I'm your host, Jimmy Wong. See ya. I'm just waiting for something a bit more like big.
There's some good shit in there. There was definitely some good shit. Go on, have a final teaser. Final teaser? No final teaser. Okay. No Phyrexian shit. What? The fuck? What's this? Is that a Twitch error screen or is that them showing up an error? <laughs> I'm glad I didn't miss that. I'm glad I didn't miss that. Okay. Okay. Let's chat, chat. Let's chat. How does everyone else feel right now about the reveals and the spoilers and the previews that we've just had? We had not a single new card shown. So that's interesting. And that's quite normal for those shows that I don't think we often do have like whole show, a whole uh, thing shown. Uh, Lord of the Rings is going to be modern legal. That's super interesting. I don't know how I feel about that. Just tweet about that angrily. Uh, let's have a read of chat. I was going to say there's a shitload of product. Yep. What's going to put in broken? Of course they will. Of course they will. I want to chug jug planes walker. What the fuck are you on about, John? <laughs> uh, Gollum can't get over the engineering bridge. Sorry. Oh, what if there are dance type cards? No, the Fortnite's the Fortnite's all reprints. Fucking Fortnite. It took them no time at all, did it? It took them absolutely no time at all. Neon Dynasty looks fucking awesome. The Crime Syndicate, Art Deco, um, Crime Noir thing, at least initially looks interesting and I'm I'm hyped for it. Um, I will... I have my reservations. Um, I felt like for a while now, it's been pretty good at not just being like random trope without much depth. I think Aminkert or Ixalon, Ixalon was like six tropes just slammed into one set, right? And um, Aminket was similar in a way. I didn't feel... I wasn't very excited about Aminket. I'm scared it'll be that. But hopefully it'll be more interesting than that. I'm just wondering, like, what narrative or thematic elements of, like, crime noir can they seriously fit into a card game? I don't know if that genre of fiction really suits a card game, if that makes sense. Um, Aminket was better warbird than Ixalan. I think Aminket was. I, I, I don't hate Ixalan. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Like, I think the story was fine as much as i know of it i've kind of something about it didn't resonate with me and they're just like it's vampires conquistadors dinosaurs on an island i was like okay i guess so did it for hearthstone mean streets of gadgetstown was sort of a cartoonish look at noir gang stuff exactly like, this is the thing right magic sets can very easily and very confidently and successfully lean into like iconography and visual elements of genres right like it's very easy then to put a, a, a thuggish ogre in a suit or demon in like the the art deco headers i think that was of nixilus right as he's holding someone who's been shot um and all that sort of stuff but can it go any deeper than that Like, in the way that... Like, in the strides a good example of them going deeper with it, right? There's exploration of those tropes through, like, a... I've said this about Annihilator, too. Annihilator is a good feeling of a kaiju crashing through a battlefield. Yeah, probably. They probably can. They probably can. Well, will be. Uh, the Street Fighter original cards will not be silver bordered. I'm just going to call that right now, I do math. That is not going to happen. Like, they will be black bordered. They will be black bordered. Monarch mechanic would be well, cool in gangster set. Yeah. Hmm. Unless they do like a remade, like a reworked monarch mechanic. Like a one that's designed for 1v1. Or it turns out it's a 2v2, 2 giants. Yeah, assemble your team sort of thing. 
You know, get your heist gang together. Maybe. I would have said there wouldn't be any guns in that set. Because they've been so anti-gun before. But they've been anti a lot of the shit they're doing now. No, right? doing right now. All bets are off. Impressive. The rules do not count anymore. Thank you, any force for the gift sub. Giving out to Enciferus 3. That's my favourite planet in the Dune universe. It's, I actually don't know if it is. It just sounds like one. Uh, if I got that right, that'd be insane, wouldn't it? <clears throat> Everyone else is depressed after watching Fortnite in a magic stream. I'm not going to lie. It was my least favourite part of the whole thing. <sighs> what if it's... Oh, Dockside Extortionist reprint. There you go. Just think about like cards that fit the theme. Dockside Extortionist will be in that set. Would it be standard playable? Would it be modern playable? No. Has a really said Fortnite's popular, right? Which, yeah, Shimmer's got a point. Which member of the Fellowship breaks modern? I reckon it's going to be Bilbo Bat. No, Tom Bombadil. Tom Bombadil will summon sagas from your deck. And there was a saga went about at the time, so it'll be broken. I hope there's a Fortnite version of Hull Breacher. Uh, which was meant to really upset everybody. And then it's now been banned. What Fortnite cards could we have? Fortnite Armageddon. Can you imagine sitting down at a fucking commander table and someone with no forward game plan just Armageddon's everyone and on the Armageddon's a fucking a little bear doing the floss or whatever. Fuck. What if they're the first holographic magic cards that change as you rotate them and, it, and it's just a fucking person dancing? What if it's that? Oh my god. Fortnite counterbalance. Yeah. Fortnite Winter Orb. Oh, come on! I want my Fortnite themed stack deck for the ultimate salt inducing. Matapatalemon, you saying there's a mothership article about the Lord of Things model legality? Is that a new article you're saying it was said before? Did I miss this? I think Pioneer Starter Decks is a very good thing. There's so much I want to make videos about, but I'm going to go and actually chill for the evening after, like, grind like a fucking motherfucker yesterday. Still going to hang out for a little bit and chat through some of this stuff. I'm looking at the news on the mothership now. Oh, shit. Oh, Fortnite jit. Yeah, yeah. I'm into it. I'm into it. No, I'm not. That'd be, that'd be so fucking cursed. Here we go. Came out today. Earlier this year, we looked at the future of Universes Beyond and discussed, in part, the legality of the cards that are part of Universes Beyond's releases. As part of today's announcements, we share more details on partnerships with some exciting worlds, including a vast, rich exploration of the stories of J.R.R. Tolkien in the 2023 expansion. Wait, it's not out next year? Huh. Didn't realize that. Tales of Middle-earth, TM. We're so excited for this set. This is only the 2023 expansion we talked about today. As part of that, we wanted to spend some more time discussing the set's modern legality. Um, yes, it is kind of adding a pseudo reserve. There is a concern around that. Although, to be fair to them, um, uh, Mark Rosewater has already explained that they can reprint these cards in other... We just haven't seen it done yet. The Lord of the Rings is a spectacular match with magic aesthetic. So many of the fantasy tropes, tales, and creatures that are seared into our minds and into popular culture owe their inspiration and popularity to this story. I'm just shouting the fucking article. Get, I'm just doing it. This is like a court ring thing, isn't it? Where the content is just reading shit. I'm into it. Uh, apart from I'm just not a cunt like he is. Gandalf is the wizened wizard. Sauron is the ultimate evil. The Fellowship of the Ring is the prototypical adventuring party. Uh, we're taking great care to create new art that captures the essence of the characters, locations, and stories in Middle-earth while staying true to Magic's art style. The image of Gandalf from the set, for example, has the visual effects and colourful composition found in many Magic worlds. I did think the Warhammer art was too colourful. 
What do we think, chat? I want to see. Yay in capital letters if you like it. Nay in capital letters if you don't like it. That's what I want to see. Nay. Don't do meh. I can't. I can't attack camp for it. What if Ragavan is just Gollum? What if Ragavan is just Gollum, chat? I wonder if food will be a big thing. So most people like the art. I'm unsure. It's very bright. But that's fine for Lordens, yes. So in Tales of Middle Earth, you'll meet Magic's take on Gandar, Frodo, Aragorn, the One Ring, and so much more. We've taken great care to make the experiences seamless between the Middle Earth loved by many and the Magic aesthetic dear to fans. We also know that the immense size and iconic nature of the stories and devotion of fans after Lord of the Rings meant that we couldn't do the set justice without creating a full product lineup to give as many players the opportunity to play with the classic characters as possible. Like all universes beyond product, the set will now not be legal and standard, but modern and historic legality. Hmm, so it's going to be on Arena? So it's not standard legal, but it's going to be on Arena. Interesting. Legality provides the greatest opportunity for the most people to experience this beloved world while still holding standard at its own space. As its own space. Fuck standard. While the set isn't focused on modern, like a modern horizon set might be, we wanted to give as many players the opportunity to play with these cards and enjoy them as possible. Interesting. Interesting. Gonna see that Warhammer arts up anywhere. No. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I have no problem with this stuff. Honestly, I have no problem with the the um, non magic IP stuff. Uh, the art for the Warhammer stuff is a bit too colourful, in my opinion. But, um, yeah. Two cards will be playable. Don't open the fridge. You know that's not true. Every set has to absolutely redefine the standard, modern, and legacy fucking landscape with at least three to five playable cards, two of which need to be banned. Sushi? Um, Sushi, I'm going to give you a mod rights. So you can post links. You can also help me in times of need. No, I'm not, because I can't do that. Why can I not do that? There we go. There we go. Post the link, Sush. What is it? Oh, this. This was on the thing. Sush. A bit late, so. This is apparently the packaging for Double Feature, starring Midnight Hunt and Crimson Vow. Draft boosters. It's 15 per 1. It's a draftable environment that's going to combine the two sets. So basically, Midnight Hunt and Crimson Vow are just a two set block like they used to be. However,. It's going to be a double feature, creature feature style thing that's going to like reference Hammer Horror and that sort of stuff with promo versions of popular cards. I'm hoping there'll be even more promos in there, like, you know, like the 15th slot will be stuff that you might be a Delver of Secrets in the old movie poster and stuff. Every card has premium art. Oh, no. So the word draft boosters doesn't mean what you think it means, chat. Draft boosters is both a product... And a term used to describe another product that doesn't have the same price point. That's what I'm learning here, chat. If they're standard price premium art. Sushi! Are, are you... Ch Sushi! Do you think they will be? Do you, Sush? Do you really think so, Sushi? That's not going to happen. It's not going to fucking happen. No fucking way. <laughs> You've been around this mulberry bush enough times, my friend. In a perfect world, I agree. It'd be gas. No, I'm not, I'm not mocking the idea. I'll be super into that. I just don't think it's going to happen. 
How many cameras? Not enough cameras! Not enough cameras! Follow me. How high can they push the price of what is effectively a standard draft, though? Well, I don't know. Okay, here's a theory. What if they're taking the promos and the showcase frames and all the other stuff that we get in the current booster product and they're taking it out to put it into the double feature boosters? Hmm. Probably not, right? Because set boosters and collector, and collector boosters are like fucking bank for them. Or well, at least they could want to tell us it is. That's not a theory. That's a price gouging theory. No, hang on, though. That's a theory. That's just a theory. A price gouging theory. Where's my fucking horns? Yes. <sighs> so, yeah, yeah, okay, so they've already announced collector boosters, so they're not moving away from that. Okay, interesting, 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 interesting. Well, they keep us a low chance to get one in a basic pack to get you wanting it. And no, they've, they've carved up the bull before to feed it back to us, haven't they? Like some sort of crazy hillbilly in a horror movie with a chainsaw. I don't know where I'm going with this. I was trying to get a horror theme thing, but. Nanopus, mate, that'd be so funny if, like, cards came with no art at all. Did I see Brad Nelson's tweet? No. Is this some drama I even want to get involved with? In? Or it's mother's brother? I'm going to scold you fucking hard if this is drama that I cannot be bothered with. Oh, that's good. That's some good shit. That's some good shit. This is Brad Nelson's tweet today. I'm, I'm fucking retweeting that. I was saying it, wasn't I? I was saying it in the video. This is Brad Nelson's latest tweet. There's a lot of exciting things coming in 2022. Like tournaments, right? Like tournaments. Right? Oh, fuck. That is... That is a point. Did it... There was not even a fucking allusion made to the idea that organized play might come back. It's gone. Okay? Look. Yeah, oh no, the new Wizard of the Coast logo is fucking awful. Anything that reminds me of Doctor Who needs to be taken out behind the shed and shot. And that includes you, Brian! Only kidding. Um, yeah. That's it. Organized play from Wizards is gone. It is dead. And now it will be replaced by independent tournament providers. That's just how it is now. That's just how it is now. Modern playable Lord of the Rings cards. I'm going to play Mono, Mono Red Fellowship Tron. I'm going to play Gollum and Taxes. Ring Wraith Control. But a beast, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a warning, my friend. You've said some stuff that I've not been keen on. Um and I'm not sure you seem to be the only person who's brought up race like two or three times in the chat so far. It's just 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 Stop. Yeah. I'm not really enjoying the, the tune. Follow me. I thought to get a tournament organizing, don't you? They also get upsetting formats. Mm. Maybe? There's an argument for that, right? There's definitely an argument for that. The Balrog is going to be fucking nuts, isn't it? it, it well, I actually said that. The, the Tarask should have been nuts. Just, just push it and get it banned. Who cares? Who cares? I got a video coming out about the worst sets of all time, including like overpowered and underpowered sets. And there's a bit in there that'll be out this later this week. And it's like, um, like Mark Rosewater and co were threatened with being um, fucking fired if they ever fucked Standard up again, like they did with Urza Saga and that block. Because it's bad for business to ban cards in Standard. It's bad for business to ban cards in Standard. None of your business isn't tournament based, right?
Yeah, there's a new unset. It's it's called un un unbelievable Jeff. Unbelievable Jeff. No, it's called unbelievable Jeff. I think um Commander Collection Black. That's a but low res image. I'm trying to find a better res image. Oh the the big fucking uh Adan Ajani looked awesome. Brothers War looks sick. Oh, that shit. All right, I'm into it. I haven't found the art with them walking down the corridor with the fucking robots yet. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it's gonna be a big mechs fighting. There's like a fucking giant praying mantis mech on the side of Mishra. That is Mishra, right? Yeah, Mishra. Yes, yeah, Mishra. Yorg was Yorg was a bastard but not the brother and then there's there's a big mech here and there's some mere style things this but i i loved listening to curry in cambria driving to events when new phyrexia was around because it felt like magic was this weird like um uh like sci-fi meets sort of comic book trope meets fantasy shit going on right i love that period of magic and then we kind of moved away from it and never really went back dominaria kind of felt that way a little bit with some of the robots and shit so, seeing us go to, like, Cyberpunk Kamigawa, and then fucking Brothers War, and I'm still... The noir thing's got a weird tinge of weirdness in my in my, in my my gut. But this is sick, because I, I've always associated that, like, pr like not proto-sci-fi, like, pseudo-sci-fi with magic. Yeah, just... Yeah. Like, the, the Convent of Scars of Mirrodin, the soundtrack of uh, the third Coheed album. Vince, I'm telling you, the noir thing is just going to be Shadow Run. Well, the noir thing and Kamigawa together, right, would make Shadow Run. Like fantasy elves and shit like that with the noir elements and the soap elements and stuff. I wonder if after this, and then we have the Frexia, or whatever the Frexians do after this, which will be in the beginning of 2024. Whether we'll see a return to fantasy tropes and they will advertise it as such, you know, like return to magics or, do you know what I mean? Origins 2, Electric Boogaloo. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited for like reprints, but the master's going to be too expensive. The commander set being a D&D &D thing with storytelling about his gate, that sounds pretty gas. Like, it sounds like a unique magic experience. And I think that's cool. Like, the unique magic experience are cool. Battle Bomb was awesome. Plane Chase was awesome. Like, Commander Legends was awesome. That stuff is wicked, and I'm super into it. When that I pushed, there was a theory, and I thought, wasn't there? People were saying, myself included, that there would be a Praetors in every set building up to it. But then we've only had Vorinclex. It's got to be the Emperor of New Kamigara. has got to be Jinka Taxis. Why do you think Dominari needs a rest, Barry? We've only been back there once in a recent time, haven't we? I think Brothers War was a sick fucking addition, the more I think about it. Like, I often complain that I don't feel like they, like, respect their history of the game that much. So, did I have Brothers War? I think that's gas. That is our, that should be our Horus Heresy. It should be good. Right. 
I think, uh, oh, Vince, it's coming out in 2,000 years after the first Kamigawa. It isn't technically in the past since Kamigawa was set 10,000 years ago or so. When was Kamigawa set? I, I think it was 10,000 years, was it? I don't think we need incest to make Bother's War good. So I'll whack a unique tree. Let's get let's get away from that, all right? Let's let's behave. Eight hundred years, nine hundred percent. Yeah, I didn't think it was ten thousand years. Do you have any idea how long ten thousand fucking years is? Yeah. So this is now in the future of even the modern thing. Hmm. Right, chat. I'm hungry as fuck. It has been super fun. If you've missed any of this, I'm gonna put this up on YouTube today, um, so you'll be able to watch my talking of the uh, previews over on YouTube once this video goes up. We're gonna raid somebody now. So all in the clown car, let's fucking go, let's fucking go. Run out of booze and then you can't defend! These guys are- Alright Rocket League, calm down. Uh, right, get in the fucking clown car, we're gonna raid Talia right now. Thank you everyone for hanging out. It's been actually really fun. I might stream these announcements more often because we had like a good shout. There's some good stuff going on. Uh, Barry got a kebab. What? It's the morning, Barry. You can't have a kebab for breakfast. Actually, you can. And I respect it. And I appreciate you. All right, good night, kids. And I'll see you with some videos all throughout, throughout the week. And I'll be streaming tomorrow night with some painting. I'm going to paint Gazgore Thracker on stream tomorrow night. So look out for that as well. To half an hour, chat. To half an hour.